Namaste. Today I thought we could focus a little bit on the outer hips. And I'm sitting in Vijrasana right now with my feet underneath my sitting bones, my heels underneath the sitting bones and bring my heels together. And Vishwasana is a good way to teach a little bit of how to keep the outer hips intact. So as you're sitting with your feet in Vishwasana, you can start to play with kind of pressing shin bones, outer shin bone heavy into the ground as you begin to lift. So just kind of going up and down a little bit, lifting and using the quadriceps, lifting into the pelvis to support you. And you can see how that strengthens the legs if you were to do that a few times, keeping the shin bones grounded as if it was two train tracks going along the ground and they were screwed in at every single place in the shin bones. You can have your legs wide a little bit if, um, if, you're, if you can't really get the shin bone down. And this requires a bit of flexibility in the ankle. So feel free to roll up a blanket and put a blanket underneath your, your legs, your, um, your ankles, so that you could roll up a blanket like this and pop this underneath your, your ankles, if your ankles need a bit of support. But if not, then keep your heels in contact with your buttocks and start to gather, gather the thighs. So take the big muscles that we were just talking about and start to roll them in and do a little bit of a pelvic tilt. So you can start to feel the integration of the outer hip sockets here. This is what you'll need when we go into uh, the next couple of poses, teaching the sides of the buttocks and how integrated the sides of the buttocks needs to be in order to hold the pose. So there's an integrity that happens in the mind. So do that a few times squeezing the thighs together, inner thighs rolling towards the floor and hold. Hold for five, 10 breaths and keeping the thighs rolling in, the big thighs rolling in and the squeezing, lifting of the front of the pelvis up to get that support in the sides of the buttocks. Shin bones heavy and take a snapshot in your mind of this integrity as both of the hip uh, crests here, the hip bones face forward and then release. So we'll go to the next pose, which is gonna require a similar action. And you can get your bricks, so your two bricks, and put your mat against the wall, so the small end of the mat against the wall. And then taking your uh, right heel, Put your right heel against the wall and then your left heel forward. Now you can take your legs a little bit wide and you can see with my legs wide, I can turn the back leg so that the same action of the thighs rolling in is happening that was happening in Vijrasana. So rolling the back leg in, it gets a little trickier when you have your legs closer together. You also feel the, the abdomen opening as the thighs turn and roll inwards. Now, can you feel how the press of the back heel, so the outer back heel is touching the wall. So I have the outer edge where you get a callus on your heel, it's touching the wall. And there's a, a, a digging into the wall and down of that back heel to lift this front thigh and roll it in. So the hips are coming forward. So look down and see, are both of your hips coming forward? And if both of the hips are coming forward and the legs appear solid, then you've got that integrity of the back leg. So again, I can get into the pose, 
turning, you can see it, turning the thighs, and then putting your hands onto your waist, pulling the front quadriceps, these big muscles at the top of the knees, pulling them up. So lifting the kneecaps up and starting to inject the heel of the back leg, heel of the front leg, deeper and deeper into the ground as you come forward to your two bricks beside you. Press using your legs. So make the legs strong here, lifting those thighs, heels planted. And now you can incorporate the chest coming forward, but keep the upper thighs rolling in the direction of the back wall so that there's an integrity on the outer edges of the hips. So the more you can roll the thighs in and lift the quadriceps, those big muscles at the top of the thighs up, and then bring your attention to the outer hips. Gather the outer hips together, just like you did in Vijrasana. Inhale, exhale a couple of times, keep the eyes soft. Breath soft as you focus your attention on those three points. Back of the heel pressing towards the wall and down on the back leg, front heel integrated with the floor. Thighs rolling in to affect the abdomen and the sides of the sacrum. And the, the quadriceps, the front big muscles lifting up towards the pelvis. Inhale. Exhale, start to come up by pressing the back foot down and change the side. So you're gonna to turn to the side, measure distance so that you can turn to the other side and so that the legs are in the same position, take the back leg to the back wall and we'll do this again. Marking those points between the front, the heel, on the on the back leg, putting your heel back into the back wall and pressing it down, gathering the thigh on the back leg and you can take your legs a little bit apart for balance sake, turn and rotate that back leg hip bone forward using the big muscle at the top of the thigh as you lift up both kneecaps. Inhale, Exhale, lift up through the chest and come forward, keeping the heels grounded, keeping the quadriceps rolling towards the back wall and integrating, integrating, squeezing the buttocks like you did in the very first pose, squeezing the buttocks together to allow for the integration as you come down and put your hands on your blocks. Keep the legs active. Heels pressing, inner thighs rotating towards the back wall as you lift up through the upper thighs. Legs strong, knees lifting and straight in the back leg, straight in the front leg. Lift and go forward. You'll need this in the next pose when we decide to turn the body forward. So inhale, exhale to come up, press the back, back leg down and turn to the side and then come up. So we'll do an exercise before going into Pravrita, the revolving pose, Pravrita Trikonasana. We'll do Vish, uh, uh, Virasana where the legs are the shin bones again are on the ground this time with the shin bones on the ground. So I'll show you this way. Buttocks is sitting. So the buttocks can be sitting on height, two levels of bricks, one level of bricks enough so that the weight transfer isn't on the knees. It is on the buttocks. So the buttocks and you can lift up, pressing the buttocks down. So it might look like two bricks, it might look like a chair, might look like one brick, and perhaps it might even look like right onto the ground. Look at your knees and take your brick, the extra brick behind you, and put it behind you on the second level. So level one, one, level two, and level three. So put it on the second level behind you. 
as you prepare to do a twist from left to right. So you may need uh, your brick higher if you're sitting on higher height. You might need a wall if you're sitting on a chair so that your elbow can be slightly bent. So this part of the um, front of the chest can open up as you turn. Prepare yourself by placing the shin bones down, lifting up through the buttocks bones. Both buttocks bones pressing, and perhaps you can feel the spread of the buttocks bones as you roll the thighs in towards each other. Looking at your knees, outer shin bone pressing. Inhale, start to take your, your one of your hands behind your back and roll the chest open. So the elbow, the um, top of the upper arm bone moves back towards the back wall as the shoulder blade touches the rib cage. I'm going to say on my left side, it could be your right side, depending on what side you chose. Turn the other arm on the outside of the knee. So my right arm on my right knee or my left knee outside of the left knee and keeping that outer rotation of the shoulder blade deep into the rib cage. Use the other shoulder blade to turn the spine. Both sitting bones pressing equally. Don't let that front shoulder bone come forward. Turn the upper outer arm away from the torso side. So the outer upper arm is moving back. Outer upper arm taking the, the head of the upper top of the upper arm back with it as the front arm rotates from inside out to turn the torso. Allow the waist to be soft to accept and receive the twist. Both shin bones planted, sitting bones planted, turn towards the front wall. And inhale, release, and we'll do the other side. So from the back perspective, you'll be able to see my back as we turn. So the back arm is gonna come back. I'm on level two because I'm sitting on the brick. But again, you can choose to have it on level three if you're sitting a little bit higher or even going to the wall or using the chair behind you to turn if you're sitting on the chair. Prepare shin bones pressing. Take a moment to feel the shin bones equally pressing as the thighs roll in and then Rotate the shoulder blade. So you may be able to see my shoulder blade back here. The shoulder blade is going to rotate and touch the back ribs on the right side. Keeping the back ribs planted, move the elbow away as the top of the, the humerus bone, this bone here at the top, moves away to open up the front chest as the other side now gets involved to turn the waist towards the back wall. As you inhale, lift everything up through the shin bones and the sitting bones. And as you exhale, use the rib cage to turn the body, turn the abdomen. Let the abdomen be soft. Keep the sides of the torso tall here. So the spine becomes tall. And then come out of that pose and bring your, come onto plank pose and release the backs of the knees as you prepare to come up. Keeping the bricks handy for Pravrita Trikonasana back to the wall. So left, right heel at the wall. And I don't know if you can hear that, but hear this sound. Really using that back wall to press and move the heel deeper and deeper into the floor as I come forward with the left leg. 
rotate the thighs as we've been learning to do is rotate the thighs in inhale take your hands onto your waist we're going to go back to that same pose the very first pose uh, pars uttanasana inhale as the legs become solid integrating through the sides of the the um, outer hip sockets gather the sides of the in the, uh, the hip sockets as you roll the inside of the thighs towards the back wall heels heavy come forward with the legs strong so the uh, the right back leg hip is in line with the front leg hip you can look down to see okay as you come forward keep the legs strong here kneecaps lifting Heels pressing, going back to those three points that we had at the very beginning. Heels, kneecaps, quadriceps, big muscles at the top of the thighs, lifting up as the uh, outer hip sockets become gathered and the inner thighs go back. Take a moment, a breath or two, to become stable and integrated here. When the Body becomes integrated, the mind becomes still. This is work on the, on the thighs for sure. And you can keep your, your brick on the, on the third level. Or if, it's, if, if this pose is a little easier for you, you can take it onto the second level. Keeping the legs strong. Take your right hand. If your left hand is, left foot is forward, take the right hand and move the torso forward, keeping the legs strong as you now integrate that shoulder blade deeper and deeper into the spine, just like you did with the last pose on the floor. Virasana, churning Virasana. Inhale, lengthen, rotating the upper arm from out, inside out as you turn the torso and lift the arm to the ceiling. Keep the heels integrated into the back wall, that back heel, keep it integrated. Coming forward with the chest as the integration of the hip sockets become stable. Make the, the hip sockets stable. And then coming out of the pose, putting your bricks on the top level. And to come out of this pose, the back leg is your rudder. Make the back leg strong as you come out of the pose. Measure the distance between the front and the back leg. I like to come forward so I can see the back leg and the front leg is the same. And then step your foot back and hear the sound of your heel hit the back wall. So that that heel becomes solid. I'm gonna separate my legs a little bit so you can see how that front hip bone has to rotate forward as the thighs roll in. Inhale, keep the heels pressing downward into, stake the heels into the ground, lift the thighs and come down into sort of an Arda half. Prasvottanasana as you either have the brick on the top level or turn it to second level and rotate, rotate this upper arm from the inside out as you turn and gather the hips to create that integrity in the back thigh area. And then turn towards the front leg. To come out of the pose, go forward with the head as you bring the upper arm down, coming back. And there's a couple of ways to come out of this pose. You can, you can come back into Parsvottanasana and then pressing the back leg back, lift up. But I'll show you another way to come out of the pose that you can play with if you choose. 
So when you come out of this pose, you're in the pose, turn, and you can come out and twist. So that's another way to come out of the pose. And then stand in Tadasana. Either feet together, thighs together, ankles together, and look straight ahead. <sighs> So thank you for today. And hopefully you get you gain some knowledge of the thighs and how the legs work in these few poses that we worked on today. And uh, namaste. I look forward to the next time. Namaste.